Are we born again by faith with works or by faith without works? Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society and I have some good news for you today. James 2, 14 to 17 is a notorious problem passage. And the way it is commonly taught is that those verses, those four verses in James, as well as all the way to, to verse 26, are about regeneration, about the new birth, and that you've got to have a special kind of faith in order to have the new birth. But there's another view, which I would call the sanctification view, which suggests that those verses are talking about the fact that we have to apply what we believe in order to gain God's blessings and avoid God's judgment in this life. I'd like to go over both views, and I'm gonna begin by giving some uh, little clips from various uh, pastors and theologians who present the regeneration view. So Mike, if you would, play clip number one from Dr. John Piper. And you are the most selfish, unloving, uncaring person 12 years from now. James would say, you're not justified. But he wouldn't say that because you didn't add a second thing simply to your faith, but because your faith is dead. It wasn't faith. Now what Dr. Piper says is that 12 years from now you might discover you're not at that point uh, a loving, caring, kind person. And if you do, you will learn that you have believed a false gospel and that you are not justified, that you are not a born-again person. And this passage, James 2, 14 to 17, uh, is thought to teach that. It's interesting that James does call this faith, whereas Dr. Piper says that faith without works is dead means this is not faith. Let's go to the second clip, Mike. Would you play the second clip? He says in verse 15, if a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food. Now, I want you to realize he's not just talking about anybody. When he says when a brother, if a brother or sister, that's not talking about a biological brother or sister. It's talking about believers, fellow believers. So he's saying you're in church and you're literally, you know, in, in the fellowship of believers and you see a brother or a sister who, as he says, is poorly clothed and lacking in food, he says, and then one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, he says, what good is that? And then he makes this connection in verse 17. So also faith by itself, in other words, that has no action connected to it, he says, is ultimately dead. The second clip is from Pastor Paul Leboutier from Calvary Chapel in Ontario. And what he says is very noteworthy. He notices that in verses 15 and 16, the illustration James uses, that James is talking about a fellow believer. And I very much agree. He says a brother or sister, and Paul says that brother or sister is not uh, a physical brother or sister, but a spiritual brother or sister. Yet it's interesting that Paul goes on to say that this person is not saved because he has what he calls dead faith. And if you go on and listen to the rest of the, the video, which I'd recommend, uh, you will see that he's suggesting this person has dead faith even though he failed to meet the needs of fellow believers, which suggests, of course, that he himself is a believer because he's part of the believing community. Mike, if you would, play clip number three. <laughs> when you add peanut butter to chocolate, it's amazing. 
how taking something so simple and maybe even a little weird, <laughs> right? Putting peanut butter right smack dab in the middle of something would change that thing forever. It's no longer just chocolate. It's chocolate with peanut butter in it. Now, if you can't tell, this is one of my all-time favorite snacks. I eat probably a million of them a day. I can't wait to get the rest of this package after this teaching is over because I love Reese's peanut butter cups. Here's the deal. The peanut butter and the chocolate go hand in hand. And that if we were to be lacking either ingredient, you wouldn't have a true Reese's peanut butter cup. In fact, you'd actually be missing out on the whole picture. It's the same thing with faith and works. They are not enemies. True faith and righteous works go hand in hand. They are two parts of God's work in us. Now, I don't know who that pastor is. He's from a church called City Hope Church, and I couldn't find anything where the video is or anywhere else that identifies who he is, but I love his illustration. It's about Reese's uh, peanut butter cups. And he's saying that you have chocolate and you have peanut butter. And you don't have a Reese's peanut butter cup until you have the chocolate and the peanut butter together. The chocolate by itself illustrates faith. The peanut butter by itself illustrates works. And only when the chocolate and the peanut butter are together do you have that which is needed to be saved. Faith plus works. And in his understanding, the salvation here is salvation from eternal condemnation. I should notice that he says in his clip that the chocolate and the peanut butter are added to each other. It's not that this is some special kind of chocolate or this is some special kind of peanut butter. It's the chocolate added to the peanut butter makes the Reese's peanut butter cup. In the same way, the works are added to the faith to make this super kind of faith that results in regeneration. Well, Mike, if you would play clip number four. If you're here this morning and you're like, I can nod along, I can sing the song, I can, I can say the words, and it has never moved beyond a, a mental ascent for you, that is a false gospel. And James says, I love the church too much. Trust him with your entire life. Get in the wheelbarrow, if you will. Now, this fourth clip was from Sterling Moore, who's with Chapel Street Church. And he ends by talking about the fact that you may be here in church today and you're nodding in agreement, you're singing the songs in agreement, and you have mental assent to the truths of the Christian faith and even to the saving message. But because you lack good works, sufficient good works, well, you're not yet uh, born again. In fact, he says that that's a false gospel to think that simply by mental assent a person could be born again. He's saying that faith without works is a false gospel. You need faith with works. When you put those two together, you have the true saving gospel. Well, if you look, I've, I've created some slides, and these slides uh, are helpful to summarize the regeneration view and then go through the sanctification view. The first slide summarizes the regeneration view. Faith with a lifetime of good works means a person is going to get into the kingdom, is going to have everlasting life. Faith without good works means the person is headed to the lake of fire. That is the regeneration view. Now, the, the second slide illustrates the uh, sanctification view. In the sanctification view, if I have faith with works, then what I'm saved from is God's judgment in this life, temporal judgment and cursings. And what I gain instead is blessings in this life and blessings at the judgment seat of Christ as 2.13 and 3.1 talk about immediately before James 2.14 through 26. Now the third slide illustrates this. Faith with works is like two hands together. 
But the fourth slide illustrates faith by itself. Faith by itself is simply one hand out there by itself. James is clearly talking about something more than faith alone. Faith alone is faith without works. Faith with works is not faith alone. That's why this is clearly a sanctification issue, not a justification issue. In the fifth slide, I'm asking you to make the call like they do in an NFL game when they throw the red challenge flag. Are these verses talking about regeneration or the new birth by faith alone or by faith with works? John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but has everlasting life. Faith alone or faith plus works? How about John 6, 28 and 29? Jesus was asked, what works, plural, must we do that we may work the works, plural, of God? And his answer was, this is the work, singular, of God, that you believe in Him whom He sent. Is that faith alone, or is that faith plus works necessary to have everlasting life? How about Acts 16.31? Paul was asked, what must I do to be saved? His answer was, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Is that faith alone or faith plus works? Finally, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Is that faith alone or is that faith plus works in order to be saved? The sixth slide talks about the way the two different views look at what verse 17 means. Faith without works is dead. In the regeneration model, faith without works is dead meaning means faith without works isn't faith at all. In the sanctification model, faith without works is dead means faith without works is unproductive, unprofitable. It's not good. Based on the beginning of 2.14, what does it profit? And the end of verse 16, what does it profit? Tita aphelos. If you want more on dead faith, I have a video on this subject on the YouTube on our YouTube channel. So the sanctification view is that faith without works is unprofitable and is going to result in God's discipline in our life. The seventh slide summarizes the two views. The regeneration view says that if you have faith plus works, you get into the kingdom. But of course, it's faith plus a lifetime of works, perseverance and good works. So you don't know where you're going until you die. In the sanctification view, it's faith plus works are necessary in order to have God's blessings in this life and His blessings forever, beginning with the judgment seat of Christ. That this is a sanctification issue. We know for sure that we have everlasting life because of the promise of John 3.16, which is not dependent on our perseverance in good works. But we do know that if we do not put our faith into practice, then we're not going to be blessed by God, and we are going to reap the consequences of God's judgment, His chastising ministry in this life. If you like what you heard today, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and remember, keep grace in focus.